Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. College football gambling picks for week number 13. We only got two weeks left of this nightmare season. Whew. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Same here. I'm just getting warmed up. Hey, let me let me tell you an interesting uh, situation that has popped up over the last two weeks. Far away. I've got a cousin that lives down in Tupelo, Mississippi. Okay. I know this gentleman, I think. Yes, you do. Okay. He uh, has the same uh, haircut that you do. Yeah. 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 So he asked me a couple of weeks ago to help him out with his college football pick em contest at work. And I said, man, I don't know if you want my help this year. Like, <laughs> my numbers hadn't been flying. He said, just pick from your gut. Tell me what you're thinking. Like, we've got to have it submitted by Friday. Last two weeks, going 11-3 and three against the spread. Both weeks. Won both weeks. Last week, there were four people that had 11-3 and three weeks. And I, like, I, because I gave them the picks, I won based on a tiebreaker between four people. It was the total score of the Georgia-Auburn game. I had 41. It ended up being 35. Yep. And it was the total score of the Baylor Oklahoma game. It ended up being sixty five, and I had fifty nine. And on this show, I can't pick anything. We'll just pick those. Just but that, pick but that's what I'm doing. Him. So I'm that, that's I'm going. A lot of this is gut. There you go. And so I'm just going gut. I ain't looking Listen. at analytics this week. None of that mess. Smart guys don't know anything. I went two and six last week. Lost four hundred sixty one dollars and thirty six cents. Chris, however. Went seven and three last week. Is that won, good? won one hundred and seventy three dollars and seventy three cents. Is that good? You lost your biggest bet. I did. Uh, Rucker scoring twenty one points. Well, I mean, you only had the first half line. They only put up seven, but but they only put up seven, and they had a goal, goal line, line stand, <laughs> a goal line stand. Rutgers, a goal line stand against Ohio State. Maybe Ohio State not who we thought they were. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, overall stats, I'm 37 and 60 on the year. I am negative 38.76 units. Chris is 35 and 41. Mm, I'm so close to Mount 500. But you are 8.55 units over what you started with, so that's good. I only got five games, so even if I go 5-0, and oh, I can't get to 500. Not yet. I'm not adding You want to toss game. another one on? No. <laughs> Every time I toss another one on, it's one of the losers. I can understand. I can understand. Uh, you can always go over to winningcureseverything.com. Find everything you want to about us over there. Uh, what is it? Podcasts, picks, previews, videos, social media platforms. Blood We're type. on Facebook. We're Fortune on Twitter. Fortune. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Type O, type B, whatever it is. Uh, you can find everything about us over there. All of our personal information is on the website, winningcureseverything.com. You can also find the Football Picks Contest for the week. Jump in that thing. You win a nice prize from Tunica. All you got to do is pick 10 games against the spread. It's a pick'em contest. It's That's easy. Right. It's put fun. your name in. Put your email in. Pick 10 games. It's multiple choice. You're getting the opening line. It, it should be pretty easy, right? Oh, well. We had a guy go 10-0 last week. I know. That's awesome. And I have forgotten his name, and I didn't write it down. I feel like a jerk. It'll be on the NFL one. I'll look it up before the NFL one. But uh, giving props then. Yes, giving him props there. And I'll, I'll put it in the comments section so that you can see who it was. Or you can just go over to the website because I put up the, the week sheet every uh, every week. So right. make sure that you check that thing out. Uh, but yeah, had a guy go 10 and 0 last week. Looked good. Seven college games, three NFL games. So go and do that thing. Of course, if you actually want to bet some real money on these games, go down to Tunica. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. They are wonderful to us. They will be wonderful to you. They got some incredible stuff going on down there. You can find more information about it over at tunicatravel.com. Let's fire in. Let's uh, let's see where this thing takes us. How many games you got? I got eight this week. You got five? I've only got five. I don't love, so the last two weeks, remember, I've loved the lines, and I've done incredible. I don't like the lines this week at all. So are you warning people not to side with you? I'm not saying that. I mean, you do whatever you want. It's your, it's your life. Look, I'm I'm telling everybody for the rest of the season, you might just want to fade me. Well, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I went two and six last week, and I love the Lions. They can do so, whatever they want. Yeah, 
do do what you feel like. I'm glad you're here. We are definitely here. glad I'm you're never, here. I'm never going to tell you how to live your life. You have uh, you have stuck around all season. If you bet completely against me all year, you would be 60 and 37, and that is damn ridiculous. So, just saying, I have not done well this year. Pretty strong. But uh, give us game one. But I did do well last year. Did we so. get any of it or the same? Uh, we didn't even look at these before. We haven't talked at all. Probably. Uh, we've got. I feel like a banker. I came from a meeting. I need to get back to my t-shirts. No. Good. Let's go. We we do have the same game, but we have a different line. Oh, we, we're me, we're going the wrong way. That makes you feel better. There you go. All right. Game number one. Let's jump in. Tennessee plus four at Missouri. Look, Missouri, we talk about this with TJ Reeves, who will be on with us in this episode later on. He's always at the end of the podcast. Um, he likes it as well. Tennessee has been playing really damn well lately. Missouri has not. I understand that this game is at home, but the Florida game was at home for Missouri last week. This team, I don't know what's going on with Derek Dooley in that offense. I, I know Kelly Bryant's coming back from injury. This team does not look good right now. There's something wrong with Missouri. Uh, they have lost four straight, dating back to a loss to Vanderbilt. Did you pick them to go like? Yeah, I had them eight ten and, and two. No, nah, it was like eight and four, nine and three, something like that. I think it was eight and four. I think I think the key key question uh, word you said there is Derek Dooley. Derek Dooley was good last year, okay. and he was good to start this year. And so, like they, I think they lost their running back, and they lost Kelly Bryant for a bit. Um, Either way, they they cannot figure out what is happening here. I love Tennessee plus four. I'm putting a hundred bucks on it. Uh, give me that all day. All right, I'm staying in the SEC. My boy Jimbo Fisher has had a rough year. Yes, he has. He's had a hell of a schedule. I mean, just a hell of a schedule. Now he's got to go to Sanford Stadium between the hedges, play Uga, and he's catching thirteen points. I'm taking those 13 points. I'm taking Jimbo Fisher. I like it. Give me 50, 50 bucks on, on any. I don't love anything this week. Everything, 50 bucks. Everything's just going to be, well, not everything. I got I got one big one. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, next one up for me. Is that all you want to say on it? You, just, you think Jimbo's going to pop up? Georgia already I think won they the... can cover. I think they're going to play it close. I just think that they, they've gotten they've gotten housed by a couple of people. And, uh, and you know. This team is young. They're inexperienced. But at this point in time of the season, you're not inexperienced anymore. That's a good point. Um, they have been playing a lot better here recently. So, I, so. I, just, I just, this is just one of those spots that I feel like Georgia coming off a major, I mean, you talk about these things matter all the time. Uh, you know, they, they already just, wrapped up the East. just played a big rivalry game. They can't lose the East. I don't know that Georgia loses the game, but I think this game is going to be close. I like, uh, I like that thinking. That was one that I, I did have. And then I got scared off. It it moved from fifteen and a half all the way down to thirteen. And I was like, Yeah, it has it has moved it's a, a lot. lot. So next one up for me. Texas at Baylor. We're going to Waco. Baylor coming off of an emotional letdown. They had a twenty eight to three lead at home, which, by the way, twenty eight to three? I know. Makes me feel pretty good. I mean, it's you got your Patriots twenty eight three. I don't know. You got Michigan State losing to Illinois after being up twenty eight three. Now you got Baylor up on Oklahoma in the first half twenty eight three. Vo- people who don't believe in voodoo are just wrong. Yeah, it, it, uh, Bill Conley said seriously, if you are you know if you score a touchdown to go up and you're up twenty seven to three, just go for two. Just go for two. That's right. Nobody gotta, ever comes back. You got to break the voodoo twenty nine three. I mean, yeah. I'm sure the Lord would be upset with me saying that, but that I just I believe in voodoo. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Baylor, emotional letdown spot. Is, is that one of those just you just agreeing to move the conversation on? Sometimes. I, I hear you saying that to people. <laughs> no, ahead. actually, I do agree with that one. Go ahead. See, but, now, but now we never know. That's, and now, but you don't have to know. That's the thing. I want to know. <laughs> move on. Move on. Carry so, on. Texas gets beat on a last-second field goal. They've already got four losses on the season. Woo! Everybody's counting them out. This line. They're going to go undefeated before they lose four games. I believe multiple Texas fans told me that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll be 12 0 before they lose four games. They are now sitting at six and four. Yes, sir. If they lose this one and the next one, they're six and six. What is the last game for them? Texas Tech. Oh, we've talked about that. 
But it's not happening. Everybody loves Baylor right now. Everybody loves Baylor. This line opened at four, and then it moved all the way up. It's at six right now. It's at five and a half right now. It's a five and a half there. You can find it at six and six and a half at other places. Uh, everybody's betting Texas, by the way. It's 63% on Vegas Insider. On Sports Rook Review, it's 60% Baylor. So, so how is that? How are they getting saying? different numbers? Vegas Insider does all the Vegas sports books. Sports Book Review does all the offshore books. So who controls the game? Well, it depends on who you... What are you talking about? Who has the power to... To move lines? No. To make stuff happen. I mean, I guess you got a point. It'd be... Vegas. That's true. Okay. Costa, Costa Rica ain't doing that. Either way. Go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. I've interrupted you twice. Whether people love Baylor or not, this is a spot that I love Texas in. I'm taking Texas plus six here to cover against Baylor. I don't think they just cover. I think they win the game outright, but give me all six of them points for $100. I think you're wrong. I'm one that's of those people that love Baylor. And that's totally fine. And I'll take Baylor minus five and a half. All right. All right. I'll absolutely take Baylor minus five and a half. Give me 50 bucks on them. I think they're the better football team. I, that, that you can talk about emotion. You can talk about all these other things. If you line them up, who's the better football team? I think Baylor's the better football team. We had a guy in one of our live chats that we did for the college playoff ask about Tom Herman getting fired. <laughs> Hired the wrong guy. Boy, LSU could have skated away. They yeah. could have could have dodged a bullet there. I'm glad they took that bullet for us. Jump you on that, to, jump on that, that right. grenade for me, baby. I'll take it. How funny would it be if Urban Meyer ends up taking the Texas job? That ain't happening. It ain't happening. A but. reputable school will not hire Urban Meyer. Now we're gonna have to have a talk about this. But we'll we'll do this not on the not on the pick spot. <laughs> but with that being said, Baylor's a better football team. Give me Baylor. Okay. I can understand. They're it. still at home. They're gonna be pissed off. Okay. They're ready to go. And that Texas defense is worse than Oklahoma's defense. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It so, is pretty bad. They, they are not getting five three and outs in the second half against Texas. Okay. Ain't okay. Happening. That's fine. Next game up for me, Michigan going to Bloomington. Indiana's look good this year. I mean, they, you know, they lost Michael Penix, but – Ramsey has has thrown the ball well. They've played really well. They have played insanely well. I've liked them most of the year. I don't like them this week. No. I understand that Michigan has Ohio State next week. I get that. It's a sandwich game. It just came off of a thrashing of Michigan State. They got Ohio State next week. I don't think Harbaugh and that bunch are looking ahead to anybody right now. I think this is one of those spots where Indiana has played them close for years. It ain't going to be this year. This is a spot, Michigan minus eight and a half. I'm putting $200 on it. Look, I think Michigan houses these dudes. This I think they the, are playing better than maybe any other team in the Big Ten. Maybe maybe better than all of like all of but six teams in college football right now. I, I, I think it could be all but three. I, I mean, they are I mean, on I, to, a I told roll. you this. We did this when we did our top ten. I threw them in my top ten knowing that. I was going to catch a lot of flack for it. I think I think they're without question a top ten team. This is not the team that started the season. I think this is the team that we thought they were going to be when we both picked them to go twelve and zero before the season started. And I don't think anybody in the country wants to play them. I agree. I want them to look good in this game so bad because I want that game in the big house against Ohio State to matter. I want it to mean I don't want an eighteen point spread. Yeah, I, I want a real football game. That's what I want. I'm with you. I love that game too. So, not betting it, but but I'm I, but I like it. All right. What uh? What's your next spot? TCU. Gary Patterson. Hell of a football coach. Likes defense. Yes, he does. Oklahoma <laughs> just had the fight of their life to try to come and win that football game, and they did. Jalen Hurts did some amazing things, but you know they didn't do. They couldn't cover the damn line because they got down by 28 points. Yeah. And now here they're laying 18 and a half. I'm taking Gary Patterson and the TCU Horn Frogs and all those points. I got scared off of this one. I think this Gary is Patterson one that I wrote down. Has pride. I think he does too. I don't think he wants to get his butt whipped. 
I, I got scared off of this because, you know, they're, they've got a, a pretty decent freshman quarterback that is still playing with like a, a injured hand. Yes. And when I went back and looked through just the, the recent years of Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley going up against Patterson. Yeah. It had been pretty. Riley has beaten well, his well, we only have we only have three years or two years of Lincoln Riley being there. Yeah, it's not like he's but it's but it's three matchups because they played in the, uh, oh, they played in the championship game. Championship game, that's right. right. The, the first year. you're talking about just a massive talent difference. Yeah, right? I agree with that. But I, I do this, like your thinking here because Oklahoma has been playing super close games, super close with games. everybody and anybody who's willing to play defense against them. Man, you can shut this team down for a half. Iowa State did it the second half. Baylor did it in the first half. If you can get two quarters where Bay, where where Oklahoma plays like crap, and you got a half decent defense, you can do that. I mean, Iowa State's defense is no no brain busters here. Okay, they're yeah. not Auburn. So give me fifty bucks. Give me Gary Patterson. I like it. I like it. I got to get back to betting Gary too. I miss him. <laughs> I can He's I can understand. Guy. I, I you love you, that you man. went against him a couple times. I've this twice year. this year hurt hurt. Hey, but, I mean, I, I wins, think I was so. one and one. Yeah. No, you. I, no, yeah, the no, first was, one I lost my ass. Yeah, on you it. did. Yeah, it was bad. I felt terrible too. Yeah, it was. Hey, I deserved it. I got everything I was supposed to get. That's fine. That's fine. All right, next Go one up for me. Illinois at Iowa. Everybody loves Illinois. They're on a winning streak. I mean, they're knocking out all these teams. They came back. Now they're coming off of a bye week. Everything just seems to be setting up for Lovey Smith and that whole bunch. Man, I I just I don't know how anybody would go against Illinois, especially getting 15 points. And Iowa coming off of a massive win over a top-10 team at home. I'm going to Hawkeyes. Iowa minus 15. Look, it has been bet up from 12-and-a-half up to 15. Illinois, on the 17th of November, they have all of these guys questionable with different injuries, etc. They got two starting defensive linemen. They got four wide receivers that are out right now. They've got two defensive backs. A, let's see, a one running back. They've got their backup quarterback out. This team is beat up right now. And as well as they have been playing, I think this is where the buck stops. I think Iowa has figured some stuff out. They're playing with confidence right now. They got that big win. I understand this would be the emotional letdown spot. But... I'm telling you, Illinois got a massive rivalry game with uh, Northwestern next week. Like, you win that one, you get to seven wins. I don't think they need this one. I think Iowa loves it. I, Iowa's going to pull them down in the mud. And I don't think Illinois wants to play down there. So give me Iowa minus 15 for 150 bucks. Okay. What you got? I'm going to stay in the Big Ten. As you go in the Big Ten, I'm going to go to the Big Ten. I like it. My Northwestern Wildcats. Holy mackerel. Are not good at football. There it is. <laughs> They're just not. They're not good at football. And uh, I believe the Minnesota Gophers are. Did you see how many points Northwestern put up last week, though? I it's mean, awesome. that is that is a scoring team. I think McCall needs I, a race. I, 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 was, I, was scared, I was scared of Northwestern guys saying that. You, listen, you know you know how many passing McCall, yards they had? McCall is going to get an extension. You know how many passing yards they had? How many? I didn't. It, it was in the 80s. They averaged 5.5 yards per pass attempt. Bowser go off? It's, oh, Lord. I don't, I don't even think anybody did. I think it was just UMass, you know, turning the ball over and whatnot. But I'll pull it up while you're talking about it. Anyway, minus 13 and a half. I'm taking Minnesota Gophers. I get two touchdowns. That I gotta, they gotta outscore them by. I think they're gonna do that. I think this Minnesota offense is really good, um, and I think their defense is plenty fine to shut Northwestern down. I love my guys from there. I love the school, um, and uh, listen, I believe fully that in order to rebuild something, you have to break it, and you have to break it all the way down. And this is one of those things where you just can't get upset when Minnesota comes into your house and beats you by twenty, because it's for the greater good. Bowser did not even play last week. They had, had so their their Who quarterback. I, one person had to have a game at least. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, their their quarterback went seven of thirteen passing for seventy six yards with two interceptions. Seven of thirteen and two ints. Yes, uh, and their running back. Let's see. 
Hull. He's a freshman. Evan Hull, 5'11", 192 pounds from Maple Grove, Minnesota. 6'4", 270. He had, let's see, 24 carries for 220 yards and four touchdowns. That's, that's, that's a pretty good day. That's a day. That's a pretty good day. There you go, Hull. Yeah, nice job, buddy. Boy. I bet he don't have that. What do you think the over-under is on this week? Less than that? Oh, significantly. That was a joke. Significantly. Anyway, I, I like North. I mean, I, I like uh, I like Minnesota. I love Northwestern. What's uh, what's the number on Minnesota? I got thirteen and a half. I, I would expect that to go up. I would play it at fourteen and play it at fourteen. I'd play it probably around fifteen. You know, this line opened at seven. Yeah, I don't know why it did that, and I don't know that that's real. I mean, it, it got bet up. I don't know that anybody actually got it at seven. That's the problem. No, I mean the people out in Vegas did. Um, and then it opened Sunday. Th- it opened at seven on it, circa. Uh, yeah, it opened How at the seven hell on could circa. They do that. I, good question. I mean, well, this I, game, I'll say co- this because if they cover it, they're going to make a metric shit ton of money. Minnesota's um, Minnesota's quarterback went out for the last two plays of that ball game against Iowa, and there's a chance he may not play this week. So okay, I eh, might get caught here. But but even still, their backup isn't bad. No, PJ Flex a hell of a football coach. Too. Yeah, like he's going to have them ready. I mean, against Northwestern, I don't even know that you necessarily have to throw the football. No, I don't either. I think they can run it. I do think they can run it. So, uh, was that 50 bucks? Yeah, I'm, I'm going 50 on everything. 50 bucks. All right. Next one up for me. Let me write down my time here. Texas State at App State. Now we're getting to the good ones. Now we're getting to the good ones. We're getting to the fun ones. What's this number? This number is 30. Holy shit. 30 points. I am taking App State. To cover this at home, Texas State, 1-7-1 and one against the spread this year. The numbers cannot get high enough. The analytics all tell you that it should be closer. And it has said it should be closer on every Texas State game this year. All of the analytics guys have been betting Texas State every single week. They can't cover a spread. Because even with Stitt and Spavitol and all of that offensive uh, uh, brain power, a lot of brain power there. There ain't a lot of talent there. Okay. So I thought in the offseason that Texas State might win three, four ball games. Mm. And not happening. I, I took uh, the information Gary gave me and I kind of evaluated it. Well, I'll tell you this it wasn't just me, but I am going the opposite direction here. App State, look, they they are rolling everybody. They are covering spreads. They're seven and three against the spread this year. Give me App State minus the thirty. At home, for a hundred dollars. I'm going to what used to be a great rivalry, and now I don't know that anybody outside of the state of California cares, and I don't know that most people in the city in which this game is going to be played give a damn. But I like UCLA plus thirteen and a half <laughs> against USC. I like them to have a shot to win the game. I don't know that they will, but I think this will be a close game. It'll actually probably be an entertaining game. Probably won't be bad to watch. I won't watch a minute of it. Well, I mean, Chip Kelly and those guys did pull off the upset last year. Every game in the world that's going to be worth watching outside of the Penn State-Ohio State game will be on at 2.30. So. Yeah, every single one of them. Um, but, yeah, I will have money on UCLA. Give me 50 bucks on the Bruins. I like it. And I'll take all those points. I like it. They, uh, they did get their brains beat in last week by Utah. Uh, but it did. I think this is a good bounce back spot. At USC and Utah. No, it's not. Although they did beat Utah, so yeah, it's kind of weird. Yes, yeah, it's definitely. It, weird. It, it, that's not how this game works, though. You are correct about that. <laughs> you are correct. All right, I've got three more, so let me roll through these. I'm gonna You're give up. you one more at the very end. Are you, you go yours? No, I'll, I'll go one. I'll get six, and if I go six and zero, oh, I'm at Mount Five Hundred. Okay. I am gonna add one, which means I'm gonna lose it, but it'll be fun. Okay, so okay. Yeah, give me your three more. All right, uh, let's see. I've got San Diego State plus three at Hawaii. I don't understand this line. It doesn't make sense to me. I could see Hawaii winning the ball game, maybe. I think it is much more likely that San Diego State wins the game. Their defense is phenomenal. What Rocky Long is doing there, you know who their defensive I, line coach is? I, I really like watching San Diego State play football. You know who their defensive line coach is? Uh-uh. Brady Hoke. Holy crap, really? Yeah. Hey, he's done he's doing well. Oh yeah, no, he's definitely doing well. He's doing but, well for himself. But check this out. You remember Brady Hoke was the head coach there before Rocky Long got hired. 
because Brady Hoke left San Diego State he left San to Diego go State. to Michigan. Say, yeah. So he came back home. Listen, listen, I would take any job working for the University of San Diego State. Or oh, San yeah. Diego State University, however you say it. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll quit this podcast and leave my family if y'all want to employ me <laughs> and provide housing for me somewhere, you know, oceanfront, be nice. Then that'd, that'd be, be a great. great spot. That's paradise. So, SDSU. If I was up. a college kid, there's no amount of money, and you're telling me I can get free, how a free place to live, and you're gonna feed me and everything, and I just got to go play a sport. I, I would leave the SEC. I don't care about championships. You get to spend five years of your life on the beach in paradise. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would leave the South. I, there's no way I'd play in the Big Ten. Weather sucks there. Like, no, I'm just going. I, I go to Arizona, San Diego State I know University. It's, nice. it's not San Diego, man. It's you just, read about it's that. It's just not. If you're going to play basketball, go to Pepperdine. You're in Malibu. How the how the hell are you not winning national titles? I've, I've died. Well, because they – Pepperdine academics, man. Yeah, they're smart kids. Yeah, you, some, I'm some not of the, smart Some of the good kids get can't there. get into school there. No. No. And Pepperdine doesn't have all that Nike money. So you know, I'm just, just throwing that out there. Anyway, uh, I've got two more. Let me go ahead and hop on these. These are, these are some more big favorites that I'm hopping on. Okay. All right. I don't like taking the the big, big favorites. But Utah, minus 22 at Arizona. That's not a big, big favorite. 22 is a pretty big number. Okay. Especially in a conference road game. Pac-12 after dark. I mean, that stuff happens. But Arizona is putrid. Yeah, they're they're This team is terrible. And Utah has been rolling. Is Sumlin safe? Is what? Is Sumlin safe? I think he is for at least one more year. Okay. But, I was just curious because he's had a bad year this year. Oh, he's had a bad two years. Well, I knew that, but I mean, I can't control last year. So. And he he apparently can't control this year either. <laughs> so yeah, Sumlin, it, like Arizona, is True. awful. They scored Fair. six points against Oregon last week. Uh, I don't foresee them scoring much more than that against Utah. I would agree with that. And I do think that Tyler Hundley and Zach Moss and that bunch are going to put up some points. They are going to be able to run the football here. They they will be able to score at will. Give me Utah minus 22 for $150. And my last pick, I'm going to that uh, big noon kickoff. I'm going to Columbus. Okay. I'm taking Ohio State minus the 18 Ooh, here. That's a lot of points. It's a lot of points. But I, it, when you look at the numbers, and yes, all the numbers say, uh, man, it's a Penn State. It should be like 14, 15, 16 at the most. And, oh, they put it at 19. Immediately, everybody jumped on Penn State. There is a reason. It was at 19. There is a reason why Ohio State didn't cover last week. They were looking ahead to this one. Chase Young is back this week. Penn State cannot drive the football. No. They are not going to be able to get explosive plays against Ohio State. Ohio State has the least amount of missed tackles of any team in the country this season. They will not have explosive plays on Ohio State. That's the only way they can score. I think Ohio State, not able to score at will, but they're going to be able to put up a bunch of points here. I think this looks very similar to the Ohio State-Wisconsin game, which was 38-7. to I think they put a whooping on James Franklin in that I bunch. I see that. Um, I think they come out with a vengeance in this one. Give me Ohio State minus 18 for the game for $150. So you took two big numbers. What? You, you said, I took three big numbers. You said they were big numbers. I'm talking about the last two games you talked about. You thought those were big numbers. Yeah. My last bet. They're going down to Baton Rouge. And you take both those two big numbers from him, add them up, they don't equal 44. No, they don't. I'm laying the 44. Today, today, your boy, it's worth more than gold to me. I'm going to tell you this right now. I got a, got a signed photograph from one coach, Edward Orgeron. Got a letter. And, uh, I, I was a happy man. I can I can understand. I'm it. riding with my guy. You you know I get in the tank with people. I don't ever. Get, I'm out, I'm yeah. I'm in. I'm forever forever. Minus forty four. I lay it all. Lay it all. How much you putting on it? I'm fifty. Same fifty bucks. I'm putting on everything. But I'm you're still, not you're not going even up that to like a hundred. Oh no, man. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, okay, a hundred. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Set this money on fire. It doesn't matter to me. All right. All I'm right. in. A hundred. I'm as I'm as all in as I could possibly be right now. <laughs> I'm I was ecstatic. I I got I got this thing in the mail and I was like, 
what the hell could this be? Like, I didn't go to school here. They can't be asking me for money. And uh, man, I started crying. <laughs> pretty, pretty happy. It was awesome. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I'll lay it. That's, uh, you you going to post it on Twitter? What? The like, at, at least the envelope. Yeah, but I'll, I'll post a picture. Post the, post the picture in the envelope he on, the, on Twitter. On he wrote his so name on it. Every, everybody That's go over to his Twitter account, at Chris B. Giannini. Check that thing out because it's uh, it's pretty well, The envelope awesome. has my address on it. I'm not going to post that. Just uh, just blink, like blur it out. No, then it'll look know. like crap. It's no, I just... Tiger no, here. just like put a line through it. Or I'm fine. Whatever. We're good. We'll figure I'll it out. Picture. Either way, he picture. wrote my name on it. He wrote his name on it. Well, somebody wrote it. I'm not naive enough to know that. That probably is some chick that works in his office. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody did. But somebody took the time to send it back to him. I love it. That was nice. I love it. All right. That is, uh, oh, no, that's not going to wrap up the show. Yeah, we right got now, TJ. Right now. Let's, let's call him. Let's bring in our buddy from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. TJ Reeves. Every single week we've got TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. You can find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, how you doing, my brother? I am fantastic. Uh, I, I hear that you guys uh, on a recent episode here have been trying to solve the college football playoff and the rankings with the masses. <laughs> How did that go, by the way, with uh, with all the feedback from the public and the interaction? Did you guys actually solve anything, or do we have to stay tuned for next week and the following week and let it play out like we all keep talking about? <laughs> you got to let it play out, people. We've well, got some plans in place. Yeah, we've we, got we got a blueprint. We and, got a, we got and we strategy. understand who you got to toss the money to inside the committee. Like I, I think we're going to go through that and discuss who is the most bribable. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll tell which fan base well, who they need to bribe. What have we what have we what have we talked about the last couple of weeks? And specifically, we saw it last week that for all the screaming about why isn't Minnesota ranked higher. Why isn't Baylor ranked higher? You've got to win your games, and they both had huge chance. And I know Minnesota got the enormous win over Penn State, but they could not follow it up. And the same with Baylor. I know Brother Giannini had the Bears on Three Dog Thursday. Nice call for the cover. But what in the name of Waco, Texas, was the <laughs> meltdown in the second half up 28-3? to three. Again, you got to let this play out, and now the committee has a reason to exclude the Gophers and the Bears, even if they were to somehow get into the championship game and win the championship game with only the one loss. They now have a reason to exclude them if they want. Well, um, hey Chris, I'm going to let you handle this one. Well, I mean, I agree with that. I, I think Minnesota could still get in. I, I fully believe that. If they beat Wisconsin, and then they beat Ohio State. They could still get in. Then I think the 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 committee would have a hard time saying, "All right, I get, I get." I'll, that I'll tell you this on the road to Iowa. Let me let me help you. I'm going to help you right now. All if right. Minnesota is the one loss Big Ten champion and not unbeaten Ohio State, you're going to get two SEC teams in. Hang the on. So you think with, Georgia with two losses would get in? Well, I'm I'm theorizing that Georgia is there as a one loss team and they potentially win, or LSU is an undefeated team, and they potentially win, and, and then Alabama, it. and then Alabama is right back in the mix with only the one loss if they went out and beat Auburn because they're Alabama, exactly what Gary was alluding to. I'll tell they you, pay attention to the front of the jersey. I'll yeah. tell you the reason why we have uh, issues with the way that the rankings are done, and it has something to do with the hometown team here. Back in 2015, when Memphis started out 8-0, and they mm-hmm. jumped, and they, they opened up at number eight in the college football playoff rankings. The University of Memphis football program still holds that rec- like that ranking high. They still look back on that. It matters to yeah. these smaller schools. It matters to those of schools. Of course. So, of course. when you are Baylor, and you start out 9-0 and after being 1-11 and just two years ago, you would think that wins over, like big-time wins over Oklahoma State and Kansas State, and whatnot, the same Kansas State team that, that – Beat up on Oklahoma. Yep. Iowa Look, State. It's we're not expecting those teams to be there at the end, but you can't them rank them thirteenth. You can't yeah. rank them thirteenth. You can't have two lost teams ranked over them, even though we know those two lost teams sure. are better than them. 
So what do we keep talking about? This fuels everybody paying more attention. It fuels the next weekend for everybody to watch the, the screaming and the hollering about those rankings and why they're revealed. So again, we will, we will watch for it to play out. We have three unbeaten in the, in the major conferences left. Why do I get the feeling that not all of them are going to get to the finish line unbeaten for the final ranking here? So let's just, let's just watch. Uh, how it unfolds. Just a little quick perspective before we get to the underdogs uh, here. Everybody comparing this Alabama situation to 2017, it's not exactly the same thing. That Alabama team was the preseason number one, and they beat the preseason number three Florida State team in the opening game in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium two years ago. They were number one the rest of the way, all the way until they got to their final regular season game and lost at Auburn uh, in that uh, in that instance. And in that case, Auburn had already lost twice, unlike LSU right now being undefeated. So it was a different circumstance. And there's a couple of other fascinating things when you go back and look at 2017. On the cusp of championship weekend, Wisconsin had slid into the top four at 12-0, and and Ohio State was not uh, in the top four, not in the, I believe they were like seventh or eighth. Yeah, and they seven. ended up they they ended up messing it up for Wisconsin and beating them and costing the Big Ten a spot in the playoff when that happened. So again, let this let this play out. We've got three unbeaten's. We've got Alabama kind of lurking, Oregon kind of lurking, Oklahoma kind of lurking uh, back there in the distance behind it. Let's see what happens over the next two or three weeks, guys. Let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of these games. There's there's not a ton of you know, underdogs that I think that we necessarily love. But there is a pretty big matchup in Columbia, Missouri this weekend, and you got two teams that are both fighting for bowl eligibility. Well, and this is one of those, and I say this from time to time on the show, on the Three Dog Thursday podcast, I've said it with you guys, where I look at a game and go, how is that team favored? Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, you know I went to the former Memphis State University, now the University of Memphis, and and I did not get a math degree from there. (laughs) But I'm trying to understand that Missouri, who in the last three weeks has scored seven points, zero points, and six points in SEC play. Now, that would be a total, help me, Chris, if I'm wrong, that would be a total of 13 points, right, that Missouri has scored in the last three games, all losses, playing a Tennessee team that has won three games in a row and has had a bye week to prepare for the Missouri team. I don't care if it's on the road or not. How is Missouri favored in this game? Give me, and and, and I'm no lover of the big orange, but give me the balls here in this spot off the bye week. I'm looking at that one strongly just because I don't think Missouri can score points, guys. Well, to be fair, they only put up 14 against Vanderbilt. This is uh, they've they've lost four in a row. They have not won a game since they beat Ole Miss uh, on October 12th. So, How is this not a pick 'em, Gary? I don't understand that. I mean, uh, I, again, the, the guys in Vegas know what they're doing. They're yeah, trying no, to get and, wagering on both sides of it. We acknowledge that, but this this is just strange to me. As bad as their offense has been, I know they're at home that Missouri is favored in the game. Well, I think a lot of people still remember that Tennessee lost to Georgia State, who is actually a pretty good football team this year. Um, but that was two months ago, you know, two, two and a half months ago, know, and they're the better. The season. I know, they're better. I'm, they're better. They are so, much better now. Yes. Uh, we'll see. We'll Missouri, see. Missouri at home is a better football team. Now, they did not show it against Florida necessarily, but I, I think that's the only reason why they would be favored in this spot. But, yes, they have looked dreadful. They still don't have an answer from the NCAA regarding their bowl ban. Uh, I think they are kind of just playing this out, and and you know they'll they'll get to Arkansas and they'll get to be bowl eligible, but you know it could it, partly because I don't see any way that Arkansas beats anybody <laughs> that has a pulse right now. So you know we'll see. Of course, we haven't seen Arkansas with the. Uh, with their new interim coach either, so we'll see. Barry Lunning will now get the task. Uh, good luck against LSU as yeah. a uh, as a forty five point. Do you guys? <laughs> have, I don't have the stat. I'm asking. When was the last time an SEC versus SEC game had a forty six point opening line? Never. Which is what LSU. That's, that's never happened. That's uh, never happened. That would LSU be never. setting records again. 
The, <laughs> wow. The, the 46 closest, point favorites the in closest, a conference game. Uh, the closest to it was Spurrier's Florida team back in the, the late 90s. Uh, that Kentucky? was ranked number one against Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. And, and they, they were 43-point yeah. wow. favorites, and they only wow. won by seven. Wow. Yeah. I think I remember that. In Nashville, I remember that, that they, they had a real rock fight with a bad Vanderbilt team, and it, it happened. And we'll we'll see if uh, if that rolls along. All right, where, where do you want to move next? Because I've got a couple of other dogs that I might be looking at uh, well, for this weekend. Chris hit uh, hit on Baylor last week. This week, Baylor favored. At home again in Waco over Texas. Uh, line is, you know, opened at four. It's up to six now. Got any thoughts on well, this? Well, interestingly, this is kind of like Tennessee off the bye week. Uh, te- you know, Texas here lost to Iowa State last week. They've been a hot and cold. Good one week, not as good the next week. Maybe this is the week that they are on. And will Baylor have a psychological carryover from that second half collapse? What did they? They ran, I think, sixteen plays in the second half of the game last week, yeah. literally, including the final drive. I don't, I don't know if there's some carryover there against Texas uh, in this matchup. Baylor's still very much alive to play in the Big Twelve championship game, but I would beware of the Horns, despite the four losses. Uh, Ellinger at quarterback. They still have some weapons. Let's see. Might be a high-scoring game, but let's see about Texas in that spot. And kind of similarly, um, uh, you didn't ask me this, but Iowa at home off the big win over Minnesota, Illinois off the bye week, kind of like Tennessee, Illinois on a win streak. That is a large line. Let's let's keep an eye on Lovey Smith and the Fighting Illini who have some mojo late in the season to maybe keep it close. Iowa maybe has a little bit of a letdown in that game. These are the kind of games we'll be talking about on Three Dog Thursday, my friend. You've got that right. Of course, everybody go and check out Three Dog Thursday podcast. It is at all of your favorite podcast distributors. Uh, before you go, look, the biggest game of the weekend, Penn State at Ohio State. It's in Columbus. It's at Ohio Stadium. Uh, OH. IO. Nope. <laughs> Chris is not going to do it for me. <laughs> all right. Um, College but, game day. College, College game, game day, day yeah. there. College game day there. Yeah. Uh, and it's an it's what it's an eighteen point line. Yes, there for Ohio State, Penn State. So Vegas showing no respect whatsoever to the Nittany Lions. But I mean, Ohio State's in kill mode right now. They they need to have an impressive win, not just a five point or eight point win. Go try to win by twenty five if you can, because that's what the the selection committee is looking at. They're looking at margin of victory. They're looking at do you wipe out good competition. Uh, we we shall we shall see. I mean, because I mean, Penn State had problems with Indiana, uh, as well as the loss to Minnesota. So let let's see if they can hang in in Columbus. I don't know that they'll be able to. I don't uh, I don't think they will either. <laughs> but 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 that's not an underdog we're picking, so we ain't going to worry about it. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Go and make sure that you listen to the Three Dog Thursday podcast. It's on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called now. Uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. TJ. You know we love you for coming in here. Thank you so much for being here every single week, buddy. Always love being with the Winning Cures guys. Gary, you'll be with me making some underdog predictions on the so- on the show. Viva la underdog. Chris, with two of them last week, let's see if the Winning Cures role continues this week, boys. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in here with us. He's always a good time. You can find the Three Dog Thursday podcast anywhere that you get your podcasts. You can also find him on Twitter at BuckSidelineGuy. This has been a fun week. Of course, you can always find our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click in the gambling pick section, and you will find it in a nice little spreadsheet. You can see exactly what we've done for the season and for the past four seasons right there. You don't even have to go back and watch videos. You can just look at the spreadsheets. Now, of course, some of the other early ones were not, uh, not nearly as neat as these. Oh, yeah, but, if you go back and watch something early, just don't judge me. Yeah. It's like a, we, watching season one of The Office. Come on, man. You can't judge it all by that. We've grown. We've matured. I mean, I've grown. We've gotten better. Hopefully. I think. I swear more. Either way. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Yeah, maybe mama not. mama says it's not. But. Nah, it is what it is. <laughs> all right, we appreciate you guys for being here. Of course, uh, go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. TunicaTravel.com is the website to go find more information about all of them. We will see you all again 
next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.